Right. This section also ends with a big theorem. It's called the Intermediate Value Theorem, sometimes referred to as IVT. So here it comes. Let f of x be continuous on AB and capital N be somewhere between f of A and f of B. So of course f of A and f of B are y values, so the N is a y value somewhere between the starting and ending y values of our interval. All right. Then there exists C in AB such that f of C equals N. So just take a moment and write that down. Uh, this is a great example of you know a calculus theorem that feels really heavy, right? I mean, how much is going on here? We've got f of x, a to b, f of a, f of b. Okay, all right, that that's not so bad. But then we've got this capital N, and it ends up it concludes with there exists c in a b such that f of c equals capital N. What is going on here? This is a really good example of a you know fairly technical theorem but when you realize what it's actually trying to say uh, you're like oh okay yeah hopefully I'm gonna show you guys a picture and hopefully this will make a lot more sense okay so here we go I'm gonna give you two drawings I'm actually gonna complete them uh, for you here as part of the video so draw yourself a simple XY plane we'll just work in quadrant one let's say you know, A is here, B is here. And I've noted their Y values. I chose to put F of A down here and F of B there. And then I mark those two points. Okay, so start off with that. I also, somewhere in between F of A and F of B, I put capital N. And I chose to put it up a little bit higher. It could be anywhere between them. I think that'll work well capital N is between the Y values of our endpoints. So what this theorem is saying, and you notice it's just kind of slipped in there, the, the continuity. Let F of X be continuous. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to connect A and B with a continuous function. There's not going to be any jumps or holes or asymptotes. You know, so it can be something very simple, you know, something as simple as that. Just kind of make that nice kind of curve that'll work well okay okay so we've got a continuous function here n is between so what is the conclusion of our theorem say then there exists c somewhere between a and b so there's a c in here somewhere such that f of c equals n well is that true for this drawing and it is so here's what we can do. Find where n is, just take n out, and it seems to hit the function maybe about right there. The x value we're going to call c. And so we're, we're saying no matter where you pick n between a and b, there's a value of c that goes with it. So the function value at C is that n value. And well, yep, it certainly works for where we put in there. And wouldn't it work anywhere else between A and B? If we picked n to be here, well, then the C would be there. And if we picked n a little bit higher, you know, then the C would be a little bit further over, right? Anywhere we pick it, there's it's going to be there. Now, what's kind of cool about this theorem it's an existence theorem. There exists C. The way we've drawn this one, yep, it exists and there and there's one. Let me give you another drawing. So I'm kind of setting it up in a in a similar way. Um, well, I changed a couple things around actually. So I put the A and the B there. This time I put F of A up higher and F of B a little bit lower. So it didn't say which one's bigger. I could put f of a higher than f of b. That's fine. So long as I then put n somewhere between them, and I chose to put it a little bit lower this time, doesn't matter. 
it could be anywhere between f of a and f of b. So now, uh, the reason for the second drawing, I, we just drew something really simple here, connecting a and b with a continuous curve. Let's do something a little bit more elaborate. So still a and b need to be connected, but there's no rule saying that it can't go up and go beyond, right, f of b maybe, and then come back, or it can't, like it could drop down and kind of do any kind of curving. So I'm going to say, you know, maybe this function goes up and then it drops down and then it comes back up and then finally it comes and passes through like that. That's still continuous connecting A to B. Okay. So when you look at N, does there exist a C somewhere between A and B such that f of c equals n. And yeah, there definitely does. In fact, for this drawing, it happens three times. Right? All of these points have that same y value of n. So we could say, well, you know, maybe this is like c1. And then again here, maybe this is c2 and C3. The theorem says it happens at least once there exists C in AB such that F of C equals N, but it could happen more than once. There's, uh, there's no rule to say only once, but it, it definitely will happen at least once. Okay, so hopefully, you know, kind of drawing these, you're like, well, I mean, yeah, so another way to state this theorem, I just put it down here. What we're really trying to say is the function hits every y value between the starting and ending y values, right? So here's my starting in this first drawing. Here's my starting y value, my ending y value. Well, if it's continuous and it connects those points, doesn't it have to hit every y value in between? Of course. I mean, what's the big deal? Like, all right, and this one, here's f of a, here's f. Of, doesn't it have to hit every y value? If I connect those two points, you know, whatever it looks like, as long as it's continuous, it has to hit every y value in between them, and it might hit some of them more than once. But what's like, uh, it would have to hit every y value. And it's these sort of theorems, like these are, you know, very, very influential theorems when it comes to calculus and the applications uh, that people have used over the centuries. And you just think, oh, I wish I lived back in those days when calculus was first being developed and I could have come up with the intermediate value theorem and been, you know, famous, you know, for centuries for coming up with that. Um, or at least know that I was the one, you know, and have that kind of influence. Because, what's of course, this has to be true. Uh, but, like, the reason why it's a big deal is because the continuity. So, continuity was not defined until calculus. Um, and so nobody could say such a thing. Even maybe people knew it. All right, anyway. What is this going to look like in problems? Well, there's all kinds of interesting problems with the intermediate value theorem, but we're really going to focus on one type, and that's this. Use the intermediate value theorem to show that here, natural log x equals e to the negative x has a solution in the interval from 1 to 2. Okay, now what an interesting uh, question. I mean, think about this. We're not asked to solve that equation. All we have to do is show that a solution exists somewhere in the interval from 1 to 2. We're not going to end up finding the answer. Actually, uh, we cannot solve that equation for x, uh, at least not with any traditional methods um, or algebraic methods uh, it would have to be done 
with something like IVT or, or something else. So let me explain why. Let me just kind of note this down here. So if we had the natural log of x equals e to the negative x, if we wanted to solve this in the traditional way, we need to isolate x, right? So you think, OK, but the problem is there's an x on either side, and there's no way, because natural log and e are opposites, there's no way to get just a single x. So you might think, oh, natural log, I should cancel that out. So I should put both sides in the power of e, and that will cancel this natural log. Well, then I've got e to the e to the negative x. And like, well, there's an x here, so that's, you know, that's not solved. OK, well, you know, what if I canceled out this e here with a natural log? Think, all right, well, then that's natural log of natural log x equals negative x. And, well, I can move the negative, but still, that's not solved because there's still an x here. Like, there's no way that I can manipulate this to solve for x. So things like IVT are at least, even though we can't solve for x, they're at least a big step in the, the right direction. We can at least show that there is a solution. And here between uh, 1 and 2 in the interval from 1 to 2. Okay, let's get to it. How are we going to go about this thing? How are we going to even use intermediate value theorem? So if you think about the theorem, if you look back at, uh, at the theorem itself, so the theorem involves all kinds of stuff. Let me, let me kind of spin this around so I have more space to write. So the theorem involves an interval, right? An interval A to B. Okay, well, we do have that. That's great. The theorem also involves a function f of x. And already that's an issue because you're like, well, I've got an equation, but what's my function? Now, this is going to be 1 to 2. But what is the function? And then there's n, right? There's this y value n. I have no idea what that's going to be. And then, of course, there's, you know, there's f of a and f of b. And well, if we need to know the function before we can figure out f of a and f of b. Okay, so here's how we're going to get started. Take the equation and subtract one of the terms to the other side. It doesn't matter how you do it. <clears throat> Here, I'm going to subtract the e to the negative x, but we could have easily subtracted the natural log to the other side. Doesn't matter. I kind of like doing this way, so we've got everything on the left equal to 0. What does that do for us? A ton. This is our function right there on the left, all of it together there. And the 0 is going to be our n. OK, so this is awesome. So we've got a and b here. We now have our function, and we've got n. Now you'll see why uh, this is our function and this is n as this problem plays out. You're, I wouldn't expect you to be like, oh, yeah, duh, of course. Yeah, that's, that's the function in n kind of see how this plays out. Okay, once we have the function, let's calculate. The only things left are calculating f of a and f of b. Okay. So here is f of a. The a is 1, so I'm going to take 1, and I'm going to plug it into my function. The natural log of 1 minus e to the negative 1. And what I'm going to do, well, I'm going to simplify it. Uh, the natural log of 1 is 0. So this works out to just be negative e to the negative 1. And look where this goes. I, I need to know how this value compares with n. OK? Is it bigger or smaller? And with n being 0, you know, this really, um, you know, it's, it's pretty natural. So negative e to the negative 1, I approximated it with this decimal value. Really what I wanted to know is, is it negative or positive? And of course it's negative. It's negative 
0 0.368 and so then I noted that okay f of 1 is less than 0. Okay that's, that's how we'll get started. Now let's go on and figure out f of 2. Well that's the natural log of 2 minus e to the negative 2 and well there's really no simplifying there so I just went ahead and put that into a calculator got the decimal version turns out this is positive so how does it compare to n it's bigger than n it's greater than 0 okay so hopefully uh, you're following me so far it's like the the epiphany hasn't really occurred yet like okay that's the function that's in we're plugging these numbers in okay so what is that here's what's happening we're actually just about done with the problem if you can believe it or not um, let me kinda let me do some more drawing here what just happened <laughs> so here's one here's two okay we just showed that at one we are less than zero we're down here and at two we are greater than zero we're up here well think about the function I've got natural log and I've got an exponential those are both continuous everywhere so somehow these two points are connected by a continuous curve and I don't know exactly what it is I'm just gonna kinda draw something there's a continuous curve connecting those points I know that somewhere between 1 and 2 it passed through 0 let me say that again because this one is negative and over here it's positive and it's continuous it must have passed through 0 somewhere I don't know where maybe it was you know maybe it was way over here someplace or maybe I don't know but somewhere it went through 0 and so what that means is there's an x value somewhere between 1 and 2 that made this function equal 0 okay let's wrap up this problem these are the formal formal language here in the in the same vein as the theorem there exists C this is the C there exists C in 1 2 such that f of c equals 0 okay we're really setting it up so think back to our our function or our equation so the natural log of c minus e to the negative c whatever that number is it's going to give us 0 f of, this is f of c equals 0 and now if I just add this back to the other side the natural log of C will equal e to the negative C where C is in 1 to 2 I don't know what that number is but I know it exists there is a value of C somewhere between 1 and 2 that will make that happen and will solve that equation um, it's a little bit unsatisfying that we don't actually find the value of C but we showed that it must exist and that's not nothing okay that's pretty cool so just to, to wrap up this section uh, the intermediate value theorem um, we see this type of example where we're like proving that solutions exist and that's kind of that's kind of interesting um, if you if you're into that sort of logic um, you know we can't find the value algebraically but we can at least show it exists truth is though there's there's a lot of really interesting applications of the intermediate value theorem um, one of which is you can so think about uh, you know where you well where none of us are really traveling much this isn't all that interesting but think about where you woke up this morning and where you are right now <laughs> so you're probably not very far from where you woke up if you're still at home and if you haven't left the house um, but a lot of times students have to come to school when I explain this so it makes it a little more fun where you woke up and where you are sitting or standing right at this very moment there is 
at some point, because we move around in a continuous way, at some point, you were exactly halfway between where you woke up and where you are right now. The exact distance, the straight linear distance, like passing through walls, passing through, you know, hills or whatever buildings, there was a moment, at least one time, when you were exactly halfway between where you woke up and where you are right at this moment. Or I should say, uh, the distance is equal. Let's take it even further. Imagine where you were born. Okay, and maybe if you were born outside of San Diego, that makes it more fun. Like I, I was born, um, you know, uh, back uh, in the South. So imagine where you were born and where you are right now. There was at least one moment in your life where you were exactly the same distance between where you were born and where you are right now. And that goes for any moment in your life. Um, there's some kind of other interesting applications. Um, I won't get into it. I, I think that uh, I think that does it. Ask me about it some other time, maybe in office hours, if, if you're curious or by email. Um, that is 2.5 on continuity. Good luck with the homework. I'll see you guys in the Zoom session. That's all for now.